Okay, let's review the problem that we're working on. We are comparing the amount of hydrogen peroxide, the active ingredient, in these two uh, household products. This one is sold in the Band-Aid aisle and used as an antiseptic. This one is sold in the laundry aisle and used as an alternative to chlorine bleach. Both contain hydrogen peroxide. It says on the antiseptic bottle how much there is in the, uh, in the bottle, 3%, but it doesn't say on the laundry product, so we have to measure to find out. So we can do a cost comparison and see, do we get what we pay for? So just to review the strategy that we're following, we are using hydrogen peroxide and sodium hypochlorite from bleach, and when we combine those, it produces sodium chloride, table salt, water, and fizz, hydrogen, uh, oxygen gas. We can measure the amount of oxygen gas that's produced in the reaction as the loss of mass from a cup containing uh, both of those materials. So in our solving strategy, the thing that we're going to know, we call X, we're going to know how much oxygen gas there is produced, and we're going to know that for the antiseptic product, and we're also going to know that for the laundry product. The antiseptic has a red label, the laundry product has a green label, and the peroxide that we're trying to measure, that's why we're doing the experiment, that's uh, what we're going to find out in our calculations. So we'll start with the amount of oxygen gas made in the reactions, and we'll calculate how much peroxide there was in the products that would have made that much oxygen in the reaction. So looking at uh, some data, I collected the data along with you. One thing I want to check in my data is, do they make sense? So given the starting masses of uh, my cups containing the bleach and the uh, hydrogen peroxide product, and then after I combine them, weighing, uh, massing them again, the mass decreased, and that makes sense because the fizz goes away, and so the cup should weigh less. I subtracted to find out how much oxygen gas was produced in each reaction, and interestingly, the one that, uh, that was lower was the one for the, the peroxide. It made less oxygen gas fizz, so maybe that means that it has less peroxide than the seventh generation uh, laundry product, which gave more fizz in the reaction. We'll have to do the stoichiometry calculations to find out just how much more peroxide there is. Before I can do those stoichiometry calculations, I need to know the molar masses of the substances I'm using. This is a calculation that should be very familiar to you by now. Uh, my, X, uh, my Y substance that I'm finding out about, hydrogen peroxide. If I list the elements and count their atoms, use the periodic table to find their atomic mass, multiply and add then one mole of hydrogen peroxide is this many grams of hydrogen peroxide. I'll use that in my stoichiometry calculations. For the antiseptic and the laundry product, they both produce oxygen gas, so my colors are combined there. Uh, two atoms of oxygen in this formula gives a molar mass of 31.998 grams of oxygen. So you can do those calculations yourself and use those numbers in our stoichiometry solving steps. When you get on to the stoichiometry calculations, there are two of them, one for each product. So the first one, it says to look at your data from procedure step number six. That's where you measured the mass of oxygen, right here. So that's the number that you want to use to start with. That is your X in the problem. And what we're trying to find out is the mass of hydrogen peroxide. That is your Y, why we're doing the calculation. So everywhere you see X in the problem, it will be about oxygen. And everywhere that you see Y in the problem, it will be about hydrogen peroxide. So let's start with the 1.20 grams of oxygen that were produced in the reaction. And I'll multiply by one mole of oxygen over its molar mass, which I calculated right here, 31.998 grams of oxygen. And then I'll look at the balanced reaction equation to find the mole ratio. The balanced reaction equation shows over here for oxygen, there's no number in the front, so that means there's one of them in the reaction. The presence of the, uh, the formula for that compound counts itself. For the hydrogen peroxide, there's no number in front, so that means there's one of those as well. So on the top, one mole of peroxide and on the bottom, one mole of oxygen. And then the last step, I'll turn those moles of hydrogen peroxide back into grams. I need the molar mass and one mole of that substance. 
I calculated the molar mass for one mole of hydrogen peroxide, so I'll use that in this calculation. 34.014 grams of hydrogen peroxide is how much there is in one mole of hydrogen peroxide. Now we set up the calculation this way so that units would cancel. The grams of oxygen cancel out and turn into moles of oxygen. Those cancel out, turn into moles of hydrogen peroxide. Those cancel out, leaving grams of hydrogen peroxide, which is what I was trying to find out all along. Now I'll do the math. Multiplying across the bottom is pretty easy because I'm just multiplying by one, so let me just write that down first, 31.998. Then I'll multiply across the top, 1.20 times 1 times 1 times 34.014, and I get 40.8168, and then I'll divide the top by the bottom, 31.98, and when I round my answer, I'll look at the fewest significant figures in my multiplication and division steps. I'll just keep three significant figures here, so I'll round to 1.28 grams of hydrogen peroxide, 1.28 grams of hydrogen peroxide. That's how much was made in the antiseptic product. So that was my uh, result for the antiseptic. Antiseptic, 1.28 grams. We'll do the same calculation for the laundry product. In the laundry product, I started with how many grams? Let's see. I had 1.68 uh, grams of oxygen gas made. That's from my step number six. The mass of oxygen gas, that's what I'm given to start with. And again, I'm trying to find the mass of hydrogen peroxide. That's why I'm doing the problem. So everywhere I see X, it's going to be about the oxygen gas that was made by the laundry product. And everywhere I see Y, it's going to be about the hydrogen peroxide that I'm trying to find. So 1.68 grams of oxygen gas were made. And again, I'll use the molar mass that I calculated for oxygen. One mole of oxygen is 31.998 grams of oxygen. And again, I'll use the balanced reaction equation. For oxygen here, there's one mole. And for peroxide here, there's one mole one mole of peroxide on the top, one mole of oxygen on the bottom, and then one mole of, and the molar mass of my Y substance. I calculated that for hydrogen peroxide. I use that again in this calculation. 34.014 grams of peroxide on the top is one mole of peroxide on the bottom. We set it up this way so that units would cancel. Grams of oxygen cancels out, turns into moles of oxygen, which cancel out. Moles of hydrogen peroxide cancel out, leaving grams of hydrogen peroxide in my, in my answer. Doing the math, multiplying across the bottom again is easy. It's just all multiplied by one. So I'll just write 31.998. Then I'll multiply across the top, 1.68 times 1 times 1, times 34.014 is 57.14352. I'll divide the top by the bottom. And in my answer, I'll keep three significant figures like I did before, because that's the fewest significant figures in a multiplication and division problem. I'll round that to three significant figures, 1.79 grams of hydrogen peroxide. 1.79 grams of hydrogen peroxide. That's how much is in the laundry product. The last step in our analysis will be to find out the percent hydrogen peroxide that was in each product. To do that, we'll take the mass of the hydrogen peroxide that we found in each product and we'll divide it by the size of the sample that we measured, which was 40 milliliters, times 100 to make it a percent. So I've already set up the calculation. When I did the stoichiometry calculation for the antiseptic, I found that there was 1.28 grams of hydrogen peroxide. 
So I took that 1.28 grams of peroxide and I divided by the size of the sample, 40 milliliters, times 100 to make it a percent, and I got 3.20 percent hydrogen peroxide in the antiseptic product, which is what I would expect because on the label it says 3 percent hydrogen peroxide. If this were rounded to one significant figure, I would have 3 percent just like it says on the label. So that gives me some confidence in the accuracy of the technique that I'm using. If I had done this several times and taken the average of data that were very precise, then I would have a lot uh, more confidence in the accuracy of my result. For the hydrogen peroxide that was in the laundry product, I found that there was 1.79 grams of hydrogen peroxide. So I took those 1.79 grams from the laundry product divided by the size of the sample, 40 milliliters times 100 to make it a percent, and found a higher percent of hydrogen peroxide, 4.48 percent. So comparing the percentages of the two products, definitely the laundry product has more uh, more hydrogen peroxide than the antiseptic product. Now the real question is, if I if I get more percentage of hydrogen peroxide, uh, am I paying more for that? Does it cost me more to get that more, or does it make more sense to buy a bunch of small bottles, even though they give me less hydrogen peroxide? If I buy more bottles, I might be able to make up the difference, and it might still cost less. So I went and I looked at the receipt for my purchase, and I did a little calculation, and I determined that 100 milliliters of the laundry uh, of the antiseptic product costs this much money, 24 cents. The same volume, 100 milliliters of the laundry product, costs 25 cents. So an increase in cost uh, of only 4 percent. So this is only 4 percent more money. So when I look at how much extra hydrogen peroxide I'm getting, I see that, you know, that's a pretty big difference. I'm only paying a little bit more money, one more cent, uh, only 4% uh, of the, the cost difference. And what percent difference am I getting in the product? Well, when I compare the percentages of peroxide, this one here is actually 40% higher. So I'm getting 40% more hydrogen peroxide for only 4% more money. So that's a pretty good deal. If I want to use uh, hydrogen peroxide as a bleach alternative, it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy a bunch of small bottles of the antiseptic hydrogen peroxide. It makes more sense, no pun intended, uh, to buy the seventh generation brand in the laundry aisle because I get 40% more peroxide for only a little bit more money, a better value, and one that uh, we should definitely keep in mind because chlorine bleach is toxic to yourself, toxic to the environment, and uh, it would be interesting to do a cost analysis of that one as well to see how effective it is. Do you get more bleaching power for the dollar from hydrogen peroxide compared to something toxic like chlorine bleach? That would require a very different kind of analysis, one that you might think about designing for yourself. So, until next time, when we do some more uh, product comparison chemistry, let's uh, finish up and make sure, if you have any questions about this experiment, that you see Mr. Woida uh, before school.